Just a quick reminder that these devos are recorded live every Wednesday at noon on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash Orchard Christian Fellowship. So if you want to be involved in the chat, uh, then join us Wednesdays at noon. Now enjoy this devo. Uh, our devotion's actually going to be a little bit of a story time. Um, let's, uh, let's pray together real quick just to center our devo, and then, and then we'll get started. Ready? Heavenly Father, um, it's always fun to talk about things that are created in our culture, whether it be screens, vehicles, uh, just these small things that can make life fun and can make life enjoyable. Uh, but Jesus, you are the only thing that matters. When all else fades, you remain. And so during this time, center our hearts on you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, a little bit of background for what we're going to do. It's going to be a time of sharing. And uh, if you are in uh, uh, in the chat or if you would like to leave uh, a comment for us later, uh, I I would love to uh, hear a little bit of your stories as well. We're going to be sharing sharing stories, remembering of moments when God came through, when a prayer was answered, uh, maybe just a, uh, a moment. Uh, I've heard I've heard people use the phrase God nods, you know, like 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 just this idea of of the presence of God manifesting itself in a cool, unique way. Uh, the reason why we're going to talk about this today. If you look throughout the Old Testament, you see the phrase, remember, blank, so often. The ones that immediately come to mind is anytime Jesus was, uh, Jesus, God was giving his commandments, right? Um, Yahweh, he, uh, he would say, remember the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, um, there was this distinct passage that just really imprinted on me when I was younger of when Joshua is about to cross into the land of Canaan and, and they have to go through the Jordan River and uh, God splits the river just like he did for the Red Sea. Um, but then he tells them, as you go in the Jordan River, uh, take 12 stones, one for each of the tribes of Israel, from the bottom of the riverbed and, and bring them to the other side and build an altar, build a monument there so that when your kids and their kids ask you, what are these stones? You can remember what happened and you can tell them. There is this idea throughout scripture where God is calling us to remember him, to remember what he's done in our lives, and then to share those stories. I had a, I had a pastor say one time, part of our calling is to never forget in the darkness what God has revealed in the light. And so what we're going to do right now, simply, is just share a couple of those stories. And if you have a story that you would like to share, we, we would love for you to, to contact us in the comments and, um, and reach out to us and, and share those stories. Let this be a time of remembering what God has done in our lives. Because if we're, if we're blunt about this, this is, this is like one of the big reasons why we believe because something happened, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't just wake up and we're like, oh, I guess I'll, I guess I'll believe in Jesus today. No, no, something, something happened. What was it? Some things have happened to strengthen your faith. Maybe, maybe not in this season that you find yourself in, but in other seasons it has. Think, remember. So uh, the first one that really comes into my mind, which I actually don't think is real. <laughs> the first one I start with is going, this is a lie. Um, when I was when I was a little kid, uh, my uh, parents took us to Elkhart Baptist. No, this was at Southside Baptist, so our second church. That Southside, 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 Southside Baptist. Awesome church, really great people. And they were doing a raffle, and there was this like toy. I think it was like it was like some huge toy. And uh, I was in the children's ministry, and I wanted this toy. I wanted it really, really bad. And so I prayed. I prayed for God to give me this toy because I'd never won a raffle before, and I won it. And I firmly believed as a kid that God gave me that toy. And and now that I look back, I'm like, that's not, 
Yeah, I don't he think gave you the toy and nobody else. That's right. He was like, no one else, Kevin. You are the chosen <laughs> this one. Is, this is for you, which he could totally do. And it, fu- I mean, like, it's funny because I jokingly tell Megan that about like I've been entering into this raffle to win these like custom trucks online, and I do it and I just pray because of that moment. Because at that moment when I was a little kid, I'm like, I'm like, God, I know that you can do it. Even if you don't, it's not going to change my <laughs> faith. But I just want to see if you'll give it to me. It'll be incredible. So that's my first moment. Do you have do you have something that you want to share? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things is that like when when we talk about how God is our like our lifeline and like all of that like he he's he's our blood running through us all the time. I I mean, I believe that because I lead worship occasionally here at the church. I am on the worship team occasionally. I don't know. I I I don't know how I do it, honestly. <laughs> and same with these things. I don't know how I I don't think outside of the specific times where I'm doing mm. said whatever, I don't think I'm gifted in any way. I don't think I have I don't have the capability of leading worship until I'm leading worship. Mm, yeah. And so that's one of the things where it's just the spirit, you know, works through me when when it's needed. Mm. Yeah, it's like not really knowing what to say or kind of how to act, and then it just happens, and you're like, mm-hmm. you're even surprised. Yeah, like, how did that happen? That happens <laughs> almost every week here. <laughs> here at the midweek refuel, the <laughs> spirit just talks through me. Sometimes we show up and we're like, what are we gonna talk about? And then we talk about something. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Um. There are there are two that I kind of purposely wanted to share today as I was thinking about it leading up to this week. Um, one was when I was in college. Uh, I went to I went to a conference my uh, freshman year at the Virginia Military Institute. It was it was in New York City. Um, it was at Brooklyn Tabernacle, a super cool conference. Francis Chan was preaching. Uh, at one point, just some awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, at that conference, I was broken. I was completely, completely broken. I was wrestling in my faith with like wanting to follow God and wanting to do the right thing and trying to just confess and uh, a little bit workspace righteousness, trying to figure stuff out. And I end up going to the front one time And uh, I'm on my knees crying out to God. And then the pastor says, turn to the person next to you and talk to them. And I look to my right and I was the only one up there with this other dude. And so I get to know him. I can't tell you his name right now. Um, For some reason, I want to say Sebastian, but I don't know why that name just popped in my head. I don't think it was. But um, uh, this guy... Was I found out later he was a homeless guy uh, living in living in New York City. He was in kind of like a um, not a not a halfway house because that's not specifically with homelessness, but it's like where you can you can get a room while you're trying to get back on your feet and um, really really wrestling with God. And he asked if we could meet up. We had exchanged phone numbers, and, and he said, "Hey, could you meet me in Central Park?" So for clarity. Um, my mom's going to freak out when I share this at 19 years old, I go meet a complete homeless man alone (laughs) in central park in New York city. That's what I do. Uh, and so I go and I meet him and we're sitting on a park bench and he's talking with me kind of like what you had mentioned. I realized not that I like didn't know what to say, but that as I was listening to him and trying to talk with him, I wasn't really listening to what he had to say. I was hearing him, but I was thinking of my response. What's the next thing that I'm going to say? What, like, how can I, how can I fix this problem? How can I, how can I help bring this man closer to Christ and even affirm that I'm a Christian? And I was getting cloudy. I could tell that our conversation wasn't making sense, that it kind of wasn't going anywhere because he was asking questions and I'd try to give answers and he would really push back on them. And so I start praying in the midst of this conversation, God, can you, can you help me? Can you help me? And I'm not going to say that I like heard this giant booming voice, 
but it was as if somebody walked past me and whispered something. That was how quiet it was. It felt like it was in the back of my mind. I heard this phrase, let go. Stop trying to, what I interpreted it was, stop, stop trying to talk. Just shut up. Shut up your mind and listen. And so I just listened to this guy talk for a while. And then once he was done, he said, what do you think? <laughs> and I actually almost responded, I don't know, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I was just listening. But after that, all these words started coming out of my mouth, actually responding to what this guy said. And we had one of the best conversations that I have ever had. And even as I, even, even as I think back about this, um, I'm starting to notice times in my life where God has really revealed himself have been times when I have been quiet. Not when I've been trying to find him or trying to seek him out, but when I've actually just sat and paused and shut up and let him make mm -hmm. himself known to me. That's something that I'm finding as I've been thinking about and trying to remember ways that God came through. How about you? Do you have do you have another one this year? I am uh, Yeah. So this, this, I mean, this year's past year has been, you know, just chaos for everybody, but, um, I made the decision last March once we got sent home because of school or because of the pandemic, I should say sent home from college. Um, I eventually came to the decision that I didn't want to go back there. And so, and that's like, you know, a lot of uncertainty and then, so I, I've, I made sure I didn't like just do that without having a plan. So then I came up with a plan uh, to go to school with a friend somewhere else. And then that plan fell through. So it's just like, but um, it's just a lot of, you know, things falling through pretty much. And um, what I'm trying to get at is... This, even though I haven't been at school and I haven't been really focused on trying to figure out my future, I've been um, just living this past year just getting a new perspective on life and like, I guess more of like an earthly life type of thing. My faith has been there all along, but it's more of like a, I, I don't know, it's a new philosophy on like my earthly life and um, just you know, I don't know how to explain it, but um, it's just been a good perspective just to get away from this whole expectation that you have to, you have to go through a certain uh, template in order to get you further in life. But you only, I realize now because I've experienced it, you only think that while you're, in college or while you're following the template yeah you're like oh yeah this is great i feel so good and then you get away from it and you're like no. why is this isn't necessary at all yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna be just fine and i'm not gonna have to spend hundred thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> right oh man i might not have school debt look at that yeah no no i uh i love that you shared that that's actually something that, that megan and i were talking about um the other day and man you said it perfectly it it's like the idea of this is just one part of your story and like you don't have to do what you think you have to do like actually trusting in god and just making the best decision in, in faith is actually better you know mm -hmm. as opposed to well i have to do this i have to do this well do you do you have to yeah you know that's a great question um Here's one that we'll kind of uh, wrap up with. This is probably one of my fun ones to share and and one that I just re remember vividly. Um, a lot of you know that are watching this um, know that I'm, that I'm in the Navy. If you're new and watching this, uh, I am... I have sent in my packet to try to become an active duty chaplain and we're going to find out from that this month. At some point, we'll find out. And so um, when I was getting into the program, it, it was 2014. It was... Uh, after my first year of seminary, and I am uh, uh, trying to get in to uh, become a Navy chaplain candidate. And so I, I, I get my packet ready. I send in my application. My recruiter comes back and tells me, 
All right, Kevin, we will find out in uh, we'll find out in October. And I go, okay, fantastic. So October comes, goes, I hear nothing. And then I uh, call um, I call my recruiter. He says, okay, so more than likely you're at the top of the list. So we'll just like figure that out. Uh, so the next month you should know. And I go, okay, okay, great. Um, sorry, go back two more months. Uh, sent it in in September, didn't hear back. He goes, let's wait until October. October comes, didn't hear anything. So now, so now it's been two months that my packet has been in, and I haven't heard back from them. So then I so then I call my recruiter, and uh, I said, hey, what's going on? He said, I don't know. I'm going to call them right now and try to get down to the bottom of it. You should have You should have been reviewed, so I don't know what's going on. And I go, okay. So I get on my knees because I was really wrestling with should I even do the military or not. And I can share with you that story another time of trying to figure out whether the military is something that I should be doing. And I prayed to the Lord and I said, Lord, if it is your will and you get me in, I will pursue this. I will I will pursue it ferociously. I will give everything I have to it. Um, but just show me that this is your will. I trust you. Immediately after I end that prayer, I get a phone call. And the recruiter calls me and he goes, Kevin Kyle, you will not believe what happened. And I said, what? He said, you were accepted in October, but the name on the form was Kevin Dial, not Kevin Kyle. The Navy misspelled your name. (laughs) So I was already in before I prayed. I was already in. And I don't know why, but that has always... Well, I do know why. It's always stuck with me because sometimes we get to a point where we're praying and asking God, but God, like God's already got us in. Like God already knows. It was just this little wink of, I'm so glad that you trust me. I am taking care of you. And it was, I don't know. It's, it's a moment that I just constantly look back at remembering that God was with me. God had got me in before I even asked, you know, before I even did my like kneel down and pray. Okay, now I know that I trusted in the Lord. No, the Lord already had me accepted. Also, Megan and I say that when I get cranky, it's not Kevin Kyle, it's Kevin Dial. Hmm. It's this it's this alter ego that we have. But um, I hope you guys have enjoyed just hearing a little bit of our stories. Um, let me just encourage you. When Jesus tells us to go into all the world and make disciples, he uh, guides us in terms of giving our testimony. And sharing your testimony is sharing your story. Um, If you don't have a lot of these, if you're wrestling with faith, wrestling with, has God really revealed himself to me? We'd encourage you to keep pushing. God is faithful. He keeps his promises, and he is working. You might not be able to see it right now. Um, sometimes we always have these stories because we look back, right? Hindsight is always twenty twenty, And so uh, find, find some brothers and sisters in the faith that can even help you look back and see where God is doing work. For those of us who have, remember it and share it. This is the call of Christ, to share your stories, to remember what God has done. Remembering what he has done will strengthen your faith. It will encourage you. It will keep you going. So maybe this week, spend some time remembering what God has done in your life. Remembering when you came to faith in Jesus Christ, those crazy moments that are unexplainable, those moments when you felt sure that it was Jesus. Remember those, lift those back up and worship to him. And I think it's going to change your week. I think it's going to change your week.